Let's begin by talking about the problem. In a typical JavaScript application, what you may encounter is something like this. You have to fetch some data. Once you have that data, you typically have to iterate over that data or do something with it. And then once you're done, you have to take that data and show it to the user in some way. Now that will typically involve actually writing out HTML and rendering in a user-friendly form. As a real example, imagine code like this, and we're gonna use jQuery to make things a little bit easier. We begin by getting our data. In this case, a simple file called data.json. And you can imagine it simply including a array of names. Once we have that data, then we're simply going to loop over it. And for each of those names, we're going to write that out to the user. And all we're doing here is finding a particular div on a web page, we're appending the name, and to make it render correctly in HTML, we're adding a simple line break. Easy peasy, right? No problem. But then things begin to get a little bit complex. Let's say your designer comes in and says, hey, can we switch it to an unordered list instead? Okay, that's no big deal. What I've done here is I've modified the code a bit. Instead of just appending to a div, I've created a variable s that's going to include my HTML. I begin it with a ul tag. And then as I iterate over my data, for each name, I wrap it in li tags. When I'm all done with my list, I close off the unordered list, and then I write that HTML out into the div. That wasn't so bad but then we have to add a little bit more logic to it. Now, what we want to do is say, if a name is a little bit too short, let's add a CSS class to it. Here's my updated code. It's a little bit more complex. In this case, you could see I've added a check for the length of each name. And if it is less than four, I'm gonna add a class to the li tag. Now you could see that my HTML that's being embedded in the JavaScript is getting a little bit hard to read. I notice how I have to escape out the quotes around the short class. It's not terrible. It's just getting a little bit hard to work with, but it works. Okay, I'm happy. Nothing is gonna change, right? And then oh, of course, something does change. Hey, let's switch that unordered list to divs instead. And you know, how about you use a different class for this other case? And how about you also prefix the text sometimes in some cases? And I also want you to hide some names. Things in general don't get simpler. Unfortunately, they tend to get more complex. Enter the templating framework. Templating frameworks work to separate the layout of dynamic content from the JavaScript that actually integrates with it. It kind of breaks up those two things so that you have some code that handles getting data and just making data ready, and you'll have something a little bit nicer to actually render that out. Typically, they rely on a token style language, which is basically going to be HTML, but with simple tokens inside to represent dynamic content. Each of these frameworks will have different ways of handling things like looping, conditions, and even doing special formatting. For example, taking a lot of text and maybe chopping it off at a certain point and adding ellipses at the end. You'll see multiple examples of different frameworks. I will go into how these frameworks work, how they do looping, etc. You'll see each of these frameworks and how they do what they do. But to help you compare them, what we're going to have is one kind of core demo that after you've seen how a particular framework works, we'll go back to our core demo, we'll put that particular framework in there, and you'll see how we solve the problem of making our demo nicer with each particular different framework. For the core demo, we have a car search application. Now, this is near and dear to my heart as I just recently bought a car a few months ago and I must have gone to about five or six different manufacturers and had to deal with their particular car search forms. The application will have multiple different areas of dynamic content. 
you'll see multiple different places where JavaScript will get something and then render it out to the screen. The car search demo will have multiple different filters for how you want to find a particular car. And it will also obviously render the cars when it is done searching. Let's actually look at this demo in the browser and then we'll take a look at the code behind it. Here is our car search example application. Right away, you could see that I have multiple different filters. I have a minimum price, a max price. I have different models, trims, and colors. I can also search by filters. Now I have a min price in here of $60,000. So we'll do a search and you could see here are all the cars that match that particular search. Now 140 is quite a bit. So let's actually bring this down a bit by saying we want air conditioning. Of course we want that. Cruise control, we'll do a backup camera and why not do internet? And now when I search, it's down to 28. Cool. But what I really want is a gold car. And now we're down to seven. You see how the application works? Let's take a look at the code behind this. So we'll begin by looking at the HTML behind the application. Now this application is using Bootstrap, so don't worry about the UI of it. But what I want to point out here is how a lot of the content isn't actually in the HTML, it's kind of blank. If we scroll down to, for example, all those filters, you could see that they're simply empty divs. If we look at the results area, it's also another empty div. Essentially, the HTML is just a shell, and the JavaScript is going to come in and actually render dynamic content in all of these different divs. If we look at the JavaScript, we can see a couple of things going on here, but I want to focus in on the actual HTML rendering. As an example, when we want to render out the different models, and that was a dropdown, you could see on line 16, I'm calling a particular API, and in this case, it's just fake data and I'm getting my models. So I have to build that dropdown by essentially creating a bunch of HTML and a select class. And it's not that bad, but we have multiple different instances of these dropdowns. The first one was the model, then we have the trim, then you could see color, and if we keep scrolling, the features is a little bit different. That's the check boxes. And then finally, the search area is even more complex. So we begin by grabbing our different filters and sending it to our API, but focus then on the results. And wow, that is a lot of HTML. And that's really, really hard to read. So what we're going to do then is essentially fix this application, which with each of the sample JavaScript template frameworks that we're going to look at, and then you can compare how each of those solves this particular application's problems. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.